Hey, I'm Callie Lewis. You're watching Geek Brief TV. On our road trip in October, we made our way up to Microsoft where I finally got to talk to David Getty about one of my favorite Microsoft research projects, Photosynth. David, we've talked about Photosynth on Geek Brief before, so I think a lot of people are kind of aware of it, but there are going to be some people in our audience who aren't sure what Photosynth is. Can you kind of give us the overview? Sure. It's a, it's a technology that takes a bunch of photos, regular photos that you can take from any kind of camera, mm -hmm. and understands them enough to put them together in 3D and make a kind of 3D uh, experience of the place or the object you're at. It's really unlike anything that's been done with photography before. So basically, if I am never going to get to go to Rome, um, I could actually experience it in 3D from my computer without having to travel. Yes. Okay. Uh, and from the photographs of people who love the Colosseum mm -hmm. or who love the Roman baths. Uh, that's the thing about it. It's not, it's not synthetic. It's not a video game. It's actually f directly from the photographs and uses the photographs. When I tried Photosynth last year, I wasn't happy with the outcome. I was trying to do a room. Half of the room turned out great, and the other half, eh, not so much. I asked David what I needed to know to get the best results. The best Photosynths are made by people who understand a little bit about what it's doing. Okay. And on the, the flip side of that is, the Photosynths that have been made by just crawling the web and finding lots of mm -hmm. photos at one site are okay, but they're not really compelling because it turns out that everybody essentially takes the same photo of Notre Dame. <laughs> People want to stay in front of it. They, they want that, or maybe it's, it's the rose window or it's the door, or it's, the, it's the, usually the front. Okay. When you scour the web and you look for who's taken photos around the back, very Nobody. few people. Oh, okay. So, you know, we did, a, we did a little research and we compared the work of one person who's shot for an hour on a, on a major landmark and then compared the quality of that photosynth to, to the best one we could make out of 50,000 photos that yeah. were taken on the web. The, the, uh, the uh, determined person, the person who knew what they were doing, actually did a better job. Okay. So it's not, as much as it sounds really appealing to think of this as a crowdsource technology right. that just sort of wonderful things just emerge, we're not quite there yet. Okay. We're, we're at the place the technology is emerging where somebody who spent an hour uh, reading and practicing mm -hmm. can make a great synth, okay. but they don't happen kind of without a little bit of forethought. So my mistake was that I didn't take enough photos to get a good synth, and I didn't overlap my shots enough, which I learned when David demonstrated the right way to shoot. I'm going to start by uh, just shooting a panorama of the room. Now, many people have done panoramic software. When you use Photosynth, you want to overlap things by a little bit a little bit more, and so we just recommend 50% uh, overlap. Every frame okay. kind of start the next frame in the middle of the previous one. So I'm going to do a panorama around here, and then we'll come back and, and get that area. Okay. So let me just start here. It's kind of not very light in here. Now, are you your your landscape and sort of portrait? Yeah. Um, is that's there that's a to reason? get that's to get the overlap. You know, a lot of people shoot panoramas in in portrait, but it's hard to get, you know, you get more vertical height, right. but you don't get much overlap that way. Okay. So that's actually one of the tricks we recommend is do your panoramas in landscape and then move in to get the details or do another layer up because it stitches okay. it all together automatically. Okay, so you could do, you could overlap 50% yeah. up or down. Yeah, yeah, okay. exactly. Do many people do the floor? Uh, if the floor's interesting, you know, it's sort of like... <laughs> <laughs> not, not, not most Yeah, I mean, there's some great photosynths looking down on yeah. things, you know, from inside okay. uh, uh, basilicas and other things like that. Okay. I originally thought I didn't get a great synth because I took some of my photos in random order. Turns out, that doesn't matter at all. Because photosynth actually just globally uh, matches, tries to match every photo with every other photo, and it doesn't pay any attention to shooting order okay. or anything else, which means that different photographers can contribute. Yeah. It means you can put historical photos together with oh, nice. other ones, and we've got some fun ones like that on the website too. If you'd like to give Photosynth a spin, the website is photosynth.net. Here's how it works. This is the Photosynth website, and this is the place where you see synths, but this is also the place where you make them from. So uh, I press Create here and it gives me a little bit of instructions about how to do it. The fact that by default things are public. Of course, I can make them unlisted, but we're going to make this one public. Uh, and then I press Create a Synth. And this is going to bring up an application that you installed, that we installed, I installed earlier. This is the Photosynth, uh, <laughs> if you like, the thing that actually makes them. Okay. Uh, and it computes, does a lot of compute, does all this photogrammetry stuff on your computer. 
Uh, as you'll see, I've got an account uh, on there, and everybody has, everybody has their own account. Uh, so I'm going to start a new synth, and this is simply, uh, you just take photos from anywhere, and I'm going to find the photos we just shot, which uh, I think are here, and let's just quickly look at them. Uh, let's give it icons. These look like the right ones. And I'm just going to select all of them. And put them in there. And you see there's about, uh, well, it says there's 83 of them. So this will probably, on my laptop, this is probably going to take about 10 minutes to compute. Uh, and I have to apologize because, Callie, you look a little bit yellow here. <laughs> but <laughs> there we go. Uh, and we'll and we'll call this the photosynth test uh, for Geek Brief. And I'll give it tags later. I'm going to make it public. Uh, and I just press synth. Um, but now we, um, you know, we let it cook for a little while. I have a shortcut at geekbrief.tv slash 671 so you can see the synth David made while we were shooting this brief, which was brought to you by squarespace.com, where my promo code will save you 12% when you sign up to build and host your next great looking website. I think I just gave you a great example of a run on sentence. Thanks so much for watching. I'm Callie Lewis. Bye.